What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, June 29th, 2018. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the busiest lady in the business, Andrea Renee. What's good, Greg? Us being on the What's Good Games cast right now on YouTube.com slash What's Good Games and podcast services around the globe. Detroit spoiler cast. Straight. Now, you're, you, do you need a second to finish your PAX submission? No, I have today, to, I'm going to hit submit panel right now. PAX panel submissions Bam, due today. Done. I got mine in yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're getting yours in now. Under the wire. That's what you got to do. You know, we all work on deadlines. And so <laughs> when you true. give the deadline, that's when the things actually get done. Yeah, exactly. Of course, remember, remind your favorite internet personalities there. Welcome to come compete at PAX for the Per Schneider Inner Sight Championship. Tweet at them I'll and be me. There. Yeah, you're already on the list. We're going to see how big we can get this tournament. Do one giant dumb panel for this dumb Amazon trophy. Did we decide what we're playing? Oh, I'm not going to reveal those cards to you yet. Oh, you I need to, to practice. Show, you have to show up there and be it's the It's going to be like Nintendo You'll World see. Championship. That's my idea. Going is I think I'm going to do it like different brackets playing different things so you get to the one secret, super secret game. I'll see what happens. Could you, you know? please throw Guitar Hero or Rock Band in there somewhere? Maybe I can, but keep, keep in mind, I could do that. But you're aware more than anybody how maybe there's going to be latency, getting to the PAX TV, doing all these different things. Oh, I'm aware. Around. I've embarrassed myself more than once talking a lot of talk <laughs> so about good my at these skills, rhythm games and, you get and then all Ooh. it takes is a half a second of lag. And that's the end of that. Done. Done if you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Kind of Funny Games <laughs> Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show right in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD, giving me your questions, your comments, your concerns, your bad PSN names, and everything else under the video game sun. Then watch us record it live, twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what facts we screw up as we screw them up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames and listening on podcast services around the globe. Housekeeping for you, kind of funny prom is tomorrow. Woo! I cannot believe it that we're oh, here no. finally. We're about to cross that finish line. When we started talking about Kind of Funny Prom on January 5th, it felt so long ago. It was a long time ago. And here here we are. We're right on top of it. It's happening. It's, we're, it's I right there. I feel like I'm not prepared enough. I was hearing Jared talk about his boutonniere and corsage, and I was like, totally forgot about that. That's a great question. Joey! You know... Joey! 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 Saw Joey! Jen was showing me her accessories. Hey, Joey, mm -hmm. you're dying, I know, under the pressure of Kind of Funny Prom, because you and Tim are planning it all. You're running through and doing all the community events yeah. right now. Uh -huh. Long, 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 long ago, yeah. you said you were putting in a boutonniere corsage order. Did that yeah. ever happen? No. Just making sure. Okay. That good. got that got backburnered wild. Into ago. oblivion. Doesn't yeah. matter. I was Is just wondering. Is there a florist I, I think who you think could do... A uh, 24 hour turnaround. Do you think they just, yeah, boutonnieres and, and My sister's corsages. trying to make me one because I also forgot and she was like, I was like, can you call Flores? She's like, yeah, but I'll also try to make Listen, one. Listen, boutonnieres are easy to make. Trevor Stuggy yeah. put and in an order yesterday at a florist near the Hilton downtown or Hilton Union Square yeah. for pickup tomorrow. So it, I think it's because possible. Because it's like we're off the normal prom season. Yeah. So the only thing is, is like you have to watch out if the florist has like a wedding that this weekend. Yeah. Mm. But mm. you might be able to do it. Maybe. Interesting, yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll make some calls. If I find somebody, I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anyways, kind of funny problems tomorrow here in San Francisco. <laughs> if you're not already here, you need to get here. You still have time. Cool, Greg? Can you look up in the sky right now? Are planes still flying? Yeah, I think I see one. Yeah, Cool Greg sees a plane, <laughs> so you can still fly to San Francisco to come be part of Kind of Funny Prom. And the have best some fun. news is that even though SFO traditionally has low cloud cover, not a cloud in the sky... You won't have any weather delays. Come Just go in. down to your local airport and get here. It'll be easy. You'll have fun and then use hashtag KF prom as you bum around. Or if you just want to see what everybody's up to. I've been listening to the Footloose soundtrack in yeah. anticipation. Of oh, prom. nice. Smart. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, we're going to have to see how it all goes. So good. Um, Bonnie Tyler? Huh? Bonnie Tyler? Yeah. Is, she, is that who sang Footloose? No. What? Kenny, Kenny Loggins sang Thank the actual you. Footloose. Well, that's what you threw me for. What, no, because she sings um, um, Holding totally. Out for a Hero. In that in that uh, soundtrack, I need to hear that one. Exactly, yeah, okay, okay. that's a great song. The, the, the tractor chicken sure. race. Sure. Right? I mean, when I hear it, I still think of Short Circuit too. Johnny Five's oh, bleeding out. He's chasing Oscar. Oscar. <laughs> great movie. Great movie. Everybody. 
<laughs> great scene. Good point, Kevin. I can't forget. It. I, I, I just said prom, so I assume I said housekeeping, and I'm in housekeeping. Yeah, you did. I'm in a fever dream. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'll let you know. It, this prom is taking it out of me. I hope I get a nap this afternoon. Uh, also, like I said, I'm on What's Good Games with Andrea, uh, Steimer, oh. and Britt. You can go watch that. Detroit spoiler cast at the end. Uh, rest of it, just the normal What's Good show. Which yeah, is a lot we of fun give you guys do. fair warning when the spoiler cast starts. So if you want to dip out before that, because it's the, it's at the that's the third segment of the show. So. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming by. Please, it was a pleasure. Finally it was fun. Back. And we discovered a new easy to make summer refreshing cocktail. We did from your friend. Yeah, Ooh. Tegan. Yeah. So if you're looking for a nice orange creamsicle drink that's actually not too heavy or sugary, uh, just uh, we used Pinnacle. Don't, don't make them watch it. Make them watch it. Oh. They can watch the show. Don't tell I think it was in the pre-show, though. Well, then they should have been a Patreon they subscriber. Should, should all right, have. there are a lot of things. <laughs> put it in the put the recipe in the comments of your video. Okay. Uh, more <laughs> housekeeping for you. I'm going to start going faster. Sorry. Uh, I'm not going to be here at all next week. I'm going to Montreal, and on July 5th, I'm finally doing a Montreal meet and greet. You can get all the information on my Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Game over, Greggy. Kevin, if you don't improve your attitude, I'm never going to bring you on a trip, and that's what you keep begging me to do. All right. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, my gosh. Did you throw a coaster? He did, but he no. forgot about the no. bar over the top would have of it. Nailed it. Also, it's like bar felt. It doesn't have much we mass. That's why I throw coasters rails. and not metal cards. Uh, Comic-Con is around the corner as well. I can officially say Thursday I'm hosting the Marvel Games panel in Hall H and then Rocket League's third birthday that evening slash afternoon in Petco Park. If you're at Comic-Con, come to the panel. If you're in San Diego, come, of course, to the Rocket League third birthday. Hang out with me there. Uh, more announcements and commitments and probably meet and greets to come but right now put that at the top of your list you're maybe going to comic-con i am going to comic-con and maybe you'll be able to announce what you're doing at some point yes soon okay, okay. hopefully the week after next when i'm back perfect uh, today we're brought to you by hymns but i'll tell you about that later for now let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the roper report <laughs> time <laughs> for some news <laughs> take me to comic-con I mean, you just got to prove why you'd be valuable at Comic-Con. <laughs> okay. Kevin's Three like, items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Yeah, we're, oh, we're there. Oh, don't be sad. It. Kevin, I think you're always useful. Yeah, it's true I am. You it's are. It's true I am. You're also And the lot, one though. moment you don't bring Kevin along is when don't shit hits that. the fan and then you're like, where's Kevin? Don't say that. You were, it works like both that. ways, though, where like you're that. a lot when I need you to be a lot and then there's times where I need you to calm down and you're still a lot. You know what I mean? I'm tired too, brother. <laughs> Number one, Google appears to be building a machine to rival the PlayStation and Xbox, or maybe it's just a streaming thing. No, this no. is via Kotaku's Jason Schreier. He has a giant article up there. I've pulled some selects from him, but of course, go to Kotaku, support Jason. We haven't heard any, oh, I'm sorry. We haven't heard many specifics about Google's video game plans, but what we have heard is that it's a three-pronged approach. Number one, some sort of streaming platform. Number two, some sort of hardware. And three, an attempt to bring game developers under the Google umbrella, whether through aggressive recruiting or even major acquisitions. That's the word from five people who have either been briefed on Google's plans or heard about them secondhand. In recent months, I'm, a, no, I'm skipping all around here too. In recent months, however, the chatter about Google has gotten louder. At the Game Developers Conference in March of this year, Google representatives met with several big video game companies to gauge interest in its streaming platform, which is codenamed Yeti's sources said. Uh, the existence of Google's Yeti was first reported on by the website The Information earlier this year. End parentheses. Google also took meetings at E3 in Los Angeles a few weeks ago. Those sources said, and from what we've heard, the company is looking not just to woo game developers to the Yeti service, but to buy development studios entirely. Parentheses. Google did not respond to a request for comment. Whispers have been quieter about Google's hardware, whatever that may look like, but the rumors we've heard suggest that it will link up with the streaming service in some way. We're not sure whether Google is looking to compete with the technical specs of the next PlayStation and Xbox, or whether Google, um, wh whether this Google console will be cheaper and low-end, relying on streaming service to pull weight. As I said, a much longer, everything you need to know article from Jason Ekotaku, but that's the boilerplate right now for what we're talking about, Andrea. Surprising? No, not surprising at all. Um, and I put a little, uh, some notes in here. Uh, when Give me those notes. I saw this story was uh, on the Roper Report that back in January, 
we reported that Phil Harrison was right. hired by Google. He, of course, a former executive at both PlayStation and Xbox. So Engadget did a write-up uh, back then, and it says, uh, just a, like a little bullet point to provide some context as to where Google might be going. Uh, most of his career has been involved with the production and oversight of gaming platforms. Starting in 1992, Harrison spent 15 years working for Sony, some of it heavily involved with the PlayStation family in regional and global executive positions. His assurance that the PS3's holistic platform would make the PC obsolete didn't pan out, <laughs> but he stayed in gaming after leaving Sony. Heading Atari for a year before stepping down and joining Microsoft in 2012 to become a lead for Xbox in Europe. Now, it's unclear what area Harrison will oversee at Google, but given his investments in VR and AR companies, it's possible he will be involved with projects in those or other gaming fields at the tech giant. So clearly they're up to something over there. And I can't wait to see it. That's the thing, and I'm not doing a lead into the list. I, I'm actually really interested to see when they reveal this, what it is, and what it means. Is it going to be Ouya too? Yeah, right. And like you know, I'll, uh, there's a whole bunch of questions, obviously, pertaining to this. I want to toss a few into the okay. mix here, right? Uh, Chris wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and says, Greg and co-host, that's Andrew. You have talked about the limits of streaming games. Could Google change that? That's where it gets interesting. Is that? This streaming on live, uh, uh, Gaikai, which then becomes PlayStation Now, uh, uh, the, uh, Ouya, what was the other one too that came and went already that I'm forgetting? That uh, they tried to make a big deal about on live, I guess, was it? Whatever. I don't remember. Streaming these things on any platform, playing PC games on your device. Right now, as I was telling you, in the other room, I have the Shadow, which is this new PC streaming service. We have the Shadow thing that's supposed to be me and let me stream games from Super HD PCs up in the sky. It's over in the closet. We haven't put, turned it on yet. It's like what NVIDIA Shield does, essentially. Exactly. This uh, concept, this hardware, this relationship exists. It's already out there, right? Why it hasn't taken off is because there always seems to be a kink. There always seems to be latency. There always seems to be these things. And if anyone was going to solve that and make it viable, I think Google has a good shot at that. I'm conflicted mm -hmm. because my gut reaction is yes, because they have more money than pretty much anybody on the face of, of the money. earth so that they could really throw a lot of uh, R&D into whatever they're going to do. Yeah. But that being said, we've seen just so many of these, you know, streaming consoles come and go yeah. and not and really just not click because what it ultimately comes down to is software and they just haven't had any really big hooks as to like why you should play with the streaming service instead of playing with one of the consoles that already exist or better yet your PC, right? Right. Um, I think if Google can come forward with a piece of hardware that has a really sophisticated streaming software and I have no doubt that they have the technology to make that happen, but they would really need to come forward with partnerships with, um, you know, credible and critically acclaimed game makers sure. to say, hey, we're going to be making a game with Rocksteady. Right. Or no, don't with take that and make it exclusive <laughs> to Google, whatever, Yeti. You never know. In my browser. Um, um, you know, I, so I think that that's really like where they could uh, stand apart is if they come forward with these really strong partnerships. Yeah. Because people who are playing games on Android aren't going to buy a separate piece of hardware for that. Mm -hmm. At least I don't think so. At least not in a way that's going to move the needle. Yeah. Right. Because they already have their phone. Why not just play the Google Play games on their phone? So uh, it can't be that type of streaming. But we're seeing a lot of other publishers look at streaming and look at digital delivery and what that means for the future. I mean, we've talked on the show already about, you know, EJ's, uh, EJ's, EA's origin access, yeah. um, origin access premiere. And we already have, you know, Xbox game pass and Ubisoft, PlayStation right? now. And Ubisoft He's getting getting calling it, yeah. it out of like, this is the, we'll have one more console generation then everything's going to be everywhere. Yeah. You know? So clearly moving in that direction, but I'm still going to say like, if they're going to come forward with hardware, they got to have a really strong software partnership. And that's the biggest thing is I it gets interesting of okay we have the hardware this was the premier way to play it you'll get the best experience you'll get 4k everything we figured that out if you don't want to do that is there you is there just a portal on the web that I'm using that I am playing games and it's not at 4k it's res down blah, blah blah like that's where it gets really fascinating of what that would mean and if they had everybody on board and if it was the entire library of Warner Brothers and Ubisoft and EA and they're all there and you're buying those games like you buy now into the Steam library that's going on here like 
when you talk about Google, I feel like they just have the juice to make something like this happen and will it into existence. And I guess the wherewithal to weather the storm of, yep, we put it out and it's not going well right now. And we had to make all these partnerships that we're losing a ton of money on, but right. we lose the money now to get you in, to make you understand that you have to play this. You get there, you enjoy the experience, and then you continue to spend in the ecosystem that makes it profitable in the long run for us. I mean, as a as a very much integrated Google user, the idea that I could have some kind of small piece of hardware that would encompass my Google Music subscription, uh, Google TV, anything you can buy on Google Play, yeah. and then have existing, you know, n cool new games on it. I'm intrigued by that. You know, if I could have a one-stop shop to substitute, you know, having all of my different plugins into my sure. television or sure. using apps on a variety of different devices, I, I would be interested in that. But again, I'm like, I already have my Xbox and my PlayStation and my Nintendo Switch all connected to my TV yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. Do I need a fourth thing? Yeah, the connected? war for those HDMI ports continues. Yeah, I mean, I got my Chromecast too. So <laughs> if you can give me something better than what Chromecast does. Michael writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says the rumor of Google Yeti is yet another indication that the industry is starting to move towards streaming games online instead of running them on your console at home. However, 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 it probably would be too much of a risk for, let's say, the PlayStation 5 to be streaming only instead of dedicated hardware. But could it be both? So on launch day, you either walk into a store and buy a PlayStation 5 or just download the PlayStation 5 app to your PC, PlayStation 4, or mobile, and you can play the games either way. Could that be the strategy to bridge the gap between traditional hardware and the future of game streaming? I, I think we're a long ways away from digital only. 100%. I, I think, yeah, we're not there yet, and I don't think that, especially for playstation 5 the app isn't the solution isn't the answer i don't i think that what what it was getting interesting when we were talking about what virtual console might be before we it was just no nintendo's doing this online is how they do it of well what if the virtual console was on playstation and xbox and you know these partnerships they already have what if they were just putting their old games over there to try to connect with an audience that's something that's more interesting that's likely more likely than playstation playstation 5 in two years coming out and being like guess what everybody We've got streaming tech down. Like, you know, look at PlayStation now as we would debate about downloading the games. Right, but look at what happened to Xbox when they attempted that when they launched the Xbox One, Play right? Anywhere. The backlash was swift and loud. And people yeah. were like, we don't want always online, this digital future we're not ready for. And so they pulled back all of those features, sure. which sure. I thought was a mistake. I was really excited about, about that and then kind of really taking a step forward and trying to do something innovative with yeah. their hardware. But clearly the community was like no we're not ready right. and that's fair because there's still so many places and speaking just about the United States where people live that do not have access to really high speed internet sure and so if they don't have that access to internet they can't live in this digital only world and that's something Jason's article touches on when he's talking about Google again if maybe they are the people that could do this because of course there is Google Fiber which is in select cities now but they want to get it everywhere they want to push it can they push that and this streaming service at the same time to make it actually encompass everything but I'm still waiting for just broad the <laughs> Wi-Fi to be good good enough you know Elon Musk right? just beaming me with yeah it'll give me cancer in 40 years but I'll be able to watch <laughs> HD movies on the go right away I'm all about it Kevin a small I sacrifice think, I think Google Fiber's dead dead yeah you think it's dead dead yeah I believe so oh you're t so are you telling me your opinion or you're saying there's facts out there that Google Fiber's there's, there's dead there's facts because like Comcast essentially companies that already own the like cables there are making it really difficult for them to add that's true I know yeah yeah but that's yeah. why I'm saying just focus on Wi-Fi get the satellites well there's there. fiber it's just coming from a different company it's just not going to be Google branded but sure. Google isn't a utilities company right like they, they don't own the they, in they don't own the infrastructure that say yeah. like an AT&T does right AT&T already has like the hard lines yeah, in the it's, ground it's really so why not complicated stuff where it's like do they like do they own it because like the government is letting them use the land without charging them rent so do they you know what I mean? When I say, okay, that's that's a good semantics thing to bring up. When okay, I say it. own it, I mean they're already established in sure, sure, sure. with all of the local governments across got the it. United States. And they have, yeah, yeah, they yeah. have the contracts and the permits and all that stuff already in place. And they have been for several decades mm -hmm. at this point. Yeah. You know, like, um, what was the name of the company? Something Bell? Southern Bell? South or, Bell. Or Southern, yeah. I mean, they had like a b bunch of different divisions before they eventually merged under AT&T. But... Yeah, there's Bell, and there was, I think there was Southwest, and the Southwest. This South is a good Bell, thing for kindoffunny.com slash you are wrong. To explain um, to us the rights of cable? No, please don't, <laughs> Jesus. No, God, don't. kebabs, don't even bother. Please, just stop. <laughs> Number two on the Roper Report. 
over at Eurogamer. <laughs> Robert Purchase, the name amongst names. This man killing it this week, asking Sean Layden tough questions, talking to somebody yesterday about tough questions. The article escapes me. I'm exhausted. I apologize. Is he the only one that's at this conference? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Amy, Amy, Amy Hennig yesterday. Uh, Ro Robert Purchase over at Eurogamer uh, talked to Todd Howard about why Bethesda popped so early with the Elder Scrolls 6, where it's going to be said. Do we know? Blah, blah. Uh, it's not in here. In the article, Howard is very much like, yeah, we know where the setting of Elder Scrolls 6 is. And then Robert starts playing fast and loose, trying to get him to uh, poke him. And then he's like, I'm not going to tell him he's in a joking way. He's like, I'm not going to tell you anything else. But then he gets into talking about why they announced uh, the Elder Scrolls 6 when they did, which is interesting because it's something we hypothesized. Here we are being right again. Right. We're too good at our go jobs. It's true. Bethesda Game Studios announcing a game so far ahead of launch was out of sorts with how the company has done business in recent years. The Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim was formally announced a year away from launch, and more recently Fallout 4 was announced only six months, five, Howard corrected me, from launch. So why <laughs> announce the Elder Scrolls 6 so far out? Quote, that was a debate. Should we do this, said Howard. There were two things in our heads about that. One, we're going to E3 and showing a new Fallout game, Fallout 76, which is very different than we usually do. And then we're going to show you another Scrolls games, Blades, the mobile game, that is very different than we would usually do. And if we leave it at just that, our, our fans are like, are you still doing the things we, the things I love. Uh, we had already said publicly where we are eventually doing the Elder Scrolls 6, but we have these other projects. And we felt like we would be saying that same thing right after E3 as something like this, Game Lab. Uh, so let's make sure our fans know this is coming and in what order. They don't know what years. We have some ideas, but we're not positive either. Uh, but here are the things we're doing or we're going to be doing. People are already talking and coming to their own conclusions about The Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield, the new sci-fi IP Bethesda Game Studios will make before The Elder Scrolls 6. So why not get it out? So why not get it out in the open? Oh, this, let's just say it, Howard. Howard. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. I thought that was back to him, but then it was a back to oh, him. Quote, let's just say it. Howard and team decided. It's better to say we're making it. It makes life a little bit easier to us. If we didn't say anything, then we would be then th they would be disappointed. And they'd still ask, what about Starfield? And what about Elder Scrolls 6? But it's also exciting. We're excited. We want to share it with everybody. The negative is, he added, we are we distracting from what we're putting out now? But people get it. Let's just be up front. This is what we're doing when and in what order. End quote. Well said, Todd. And I think it's a good move. I, I Again, they're not... They go on, The article goes on again, because Robert's killing it, of just like, well, does this detract from these announcements? Does it build hype for too long? And he's like, that's a possibility, but we'd rather you just know, and then you know what's happening, and you sell our Bethesda. And it was an interesting point, even after the Bethesda conference. I didn't you know, think about this when I was watching it, but you know, people were putting out of like... At the Game Awards, they run the whole like PSA of like save single player, single player lives, and then this year at E3, it's like here's all these online games. And like if you hadn't had, we are still we are still the Bethesda you know and love. Starfield's a game you're gonna love. Uh, Elder Scrolls Six is gonna be the game you love. They're not all online. They're not all these multiplayer experiences. Who are these people that's thinking Bethesda's going all online? It's not. Why I think are it's people just, just people so be reactionary? They want to be snarky because that's, calm that's down. the moment to you get the tweet out. Get the tweet out, like, Andrea. Just, just use your common sense. Use your noggin. That's There's not what the internet's single for. Single player's not disappearing, obviously. I'm just saying. It's not. I know yeah, it's not. We I'm, saved I'm, it. We saved it, everybody. Kevin, you were a big part of that. I, I, I appreciate you. I know. And number three, and final on the Roper Report, and final for me for more than a week. I, I titled this one Jesus Christ Steam. <laughs> Joe Donnelly at PC Gamer filed it. Valve's business development head, Jan Peter Ewert, says Steam had 13.5 million first. New, I'm sorry, new first-time purchasers in the first few months of 2018. Speaking at the Business Conference for Games Industry event in Russia this week, it tied the fi this figure around 3.375 million new buyers per month between January 1st and April 30th to Steam's recent increase in supported currencies. It suggested Steam's increase is supported payment methods Steam's increase in supported payment methods is designed to benefit developers and that this figure has risen from 40 in 2014 to more than 80 methods this year. Outlined by indie developer Michael Kuzmin, who also quizzed Ewert about Steam Spy and Valve's potential alternative plans, Ewert said Steam's peak concurrent user total sat between 5 and 10 million in 2014, but is now shy of 20 million. Likewise, the platform's daily active users has nearly quadrupled in that time, from over 10 million to over 40 million. 
big stats, big numbers, and I was like, holy shit. Like, I, for me, it's just the, I, I think of Steam having been around for so long, PC gaming having been established for so long, that if you're a Steam user, you've been a Steam user forever, congratulations, you got a huge library, it's, everything's backwards compatibility, it's great, 60 frames per second, 4K visuals, I get it, it's better to point and click and shoot things. But to say that they had 13.5 million new first-time purchasers in the first few months, in four months, pretty much, January 1st to April 30th, you had 13.5 million new people come through to buy stuff. It's everybody on Steambox, man. That's everybody on Steambox. That's what it was. Of course. What was I thinking? That's the one that broke through. Uh, it, it's. I feel like we're getting... With this, this is one of those articles when we talk about concurrence, when we talk about how many copies of whatever game has been sold. You get to this point and you're just like... I can't even wrap my head around these numbers, right? Like, I don't know what this even looks like. That Valve's quadrupled its concurrence. Is that worldwide? This is what a PC gamer is reporting. I would assume it's worldwide as they're speaking at uh, this Russian conference talking about everything from what's happening with their Washington-based business. See, when you had this on the... And I'm not trying to be like Debbie Downer here. But like when you had this on the rundown, I was like, is this... Is this big news? Is that number impressive? Yeah. I, I was like, is do we have something to compare it against? Yeah. So we can be like, wow, that really is crazy. Or, oh, yeah, that's about like what, you know, iOS ads. I mean, because if you think about it, like, I, I guess I just always assume mobile is the biggest marketplace because every report that we've gotten for the last five years, year over year, mobile is gaining on PC. And I believe 2018 was supposed to be the first year that mobile actually has overtaken PC as the number one platform worldwide where mm, people play mm. video games. Um, I will need to check that stat. Uh, well, and if somebody, it for you with somebody wants to check it on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games and write to me at kind of funny.com slash you're wrong. That would be great. But um, I, we, you know, we get these yearly reports of how the profits are going in the video game industry. And, and it's always been interesting kind of watching where P, cause PC has always dominated, has always been the number one place where people play video games. Um, and I think some people forget that because, you know, we talk about consoles all the time because we, we sure like do, playing on awesome. consoles. But, Better than mouse and keyboard, I'll tell you what. But yeah, this is great. Good for oh, Steam. Jim. Thank you. Hello. Thank you, Kev. I'll always, I'll always represent for you. I just, like many people out there, hope that Steam and Valve in particular don't forget how to publish games. Please make some more games. Half-Life's overrated. Uh, agree there. Okay, good. Go sure. ahead. Thank you. You, Sorry. Can, you can fight me if you want to. But remember, they um, they acquired um, the, someone recently. The Firewatch guys. Yes, Campo Santo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you guys doing, huh? They're Making a game. They're still working on that one game. Yeah. The, with the the hair physics, they like a lot. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Hair physics. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Andrew, I'm looking forward to that Campo Santo <laughs> hair physics game that names escapes me. Kind of funny. <laughs> com slash you're wrong. But I'll look it up right it's now. so far away. If I wanted to know what games came to the Mom and Grop digital shops today, where would I go? You would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily shows each and every weekday. Mm, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought you were leaving me hanging there, Kev, but I you're know. on it. You're on I it. Was, in my mind, I was smiling. I was like, he makes him leave and hang him. <laughs> Out today, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is on Xbox One and Switch. If you have the PlayStation 4 version, there's a patch now for it, too. That includes a whole bunch of bonus goodies now. Campo Santos game is in the Valley of the Gods. In the Valley of the Gods. Thank you very much. No problem. Uh, Esper is on PlayStation VR. Event Tide 3 Legacy of Legends is on PlayStation 4. Ikaruga comes to PlayStation 4. The Crew 2 comes to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Magical Brickout comes to Xbox One. Photon, I think Cubed, comes to Steam is how I would say it. Because it's a three up there, like, you know, math ways. Right. That's hard. I just put Photon 3, but Photon's on Steam. Uh... Psychedelia, psychedelicia, psycho, psychedelic uh, of the Ashen Hawk is on PlayStation Vita. Holy shit. <laughs> good, good on you. Good on you for your weird name and putting on Vita only. Go get them. <laughs> Waking Violet is on Switch. And then Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, comes to Switch as well. New dates for you. Yeez, Memory of Celsita, will release on P Windows PC via Steam, Good Old Games, and the Humble Store by Humble Bundle on July 25th. And then Diddy Kong, Birdo, and Koopa Parachrooper will swing into action this fall as free playable characters in Mario Tennis Aces. Andrew. Yes. It's time for Reader Mail. Let's do it. First, though, it's brought to you by Hims. Forhims.com is a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, sexual wellness for men. Hims connects you with real doctors and medical-grade solutions to treat hair loss. Well-known generic equivalents to name brand prescriptions to help you keep your hair. No snake oil pills or gas station counter supplements. Prescription solutions backed by science. Kevin. 
Science with Kev. Remember that? That was a fun part of the science, science, science with Kev. Uh, no waiting room, no awkward doctor visits. You can save hours by going to forhims.com just like Andy Cortez and Nick Scarpino did. They are worried about losing their hair. They took photos of their hairline, sent them into the For Hims people. They, the For Hims people sent back, hey, here's what you need to do. Here's what you don't need to do. They sent the, the, the uh, medical grade solutions for them and now they're using them and they seem happy. Listeners, right now, you can get a trial month of hymns for just $5 right now while supplies last. See the website for full details. This would cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy. Go to forhims.com slash games daily. That's F O R H I M S dot com slash games daily. Forhims.com slash games daily. Dukes writes in to kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says, Greetings, Greg and Andrea. With Sony claiming they are looking into options for crossplay, it got me thinking. If Sony enabled crossplay between all systems and all supported games, but also increased the price of PlayStation Plus five to ten dollars a year to make it happen, would that be an acceptable answer? If it all really comes down to money, Sony could make their extra cash, and the audience could get this feature they want. Would this just bring more Sony? Or would this just bring on more Sony hate? And should fans even be expected to pay for a feature like this, even though other platforms are already providing it? Thanks for everything, and take that chicken out for a nice dinner once in a while. <laughs> Your friend Dukes. I don't think you can do that. No. Uh, what you would give there is uh, an immediate uh, advantage to Xbox. Uh, in this in this arms race of tr- features and how you're treating your consumer of saying cool we're going up ten dollars and everybody be like well play- uh, xbox isn't going up ten dollars and if i start playing on xbox and one of my friends stays on playstation with the deal you've just established i can play with that friend and never have to worry about it right so i don't think that they could um charge more they would just have to like lock down certain things within their store yeah or they have to you know work their partnerships and get exclusive items that you can only buy on their platform i also feel like it's just I, he says here, you got me thinking, you know, if Sony uh, enabled crossplay across all systems in all supported games, like, I think that's the biggest thing. I, it's, you always bring up this example of, you know, you can't play Call of Duty or Destiny or uh, all these different mainstream AAA games from big publishers, Ubisoft's The Division, stuff like that, across all platforms, right? I don't think we're... I don't, I, we're not going to say never, obviously, but there, we're nowhere close to that happening, right? This is, we're talking about Fortnite, and Rocket League and that other game, Minecraft. Yeah, yeah, Minecraft, right? Uh, and those, even those being the, the gems of that. Like there was a game yesterday that came out, right? That we talked about on the show that somebody wrote in about that. It's a it's a multiplayer game that yeah is crossplay for everybody except PlayStation. Like it's more those big titles tackling it right there. For those three titles, you couldn't increase your price at all. You would look so terrible. Yeah, and I just don't think that increasing the price specifically for crossplay is something that makes sense. Um, Because then it feels like a tax more than anything versus like an added value. Because right now, I think there's a lot of value in PlayStation Plus subscriptions. Um, And I mean, obviously, you and I both have them and they give away. We talk talk about the free games they do all the time. But I think if we're really talking about a world with where crossplay exists, um, they all have to have the same the same online access. That being said, look look what Nintendo's doing with online access. It's substantially cheaper, mm, but you mm. don't get nearly as much. But we also don't know just how robust it's going to be once it finally launches. Yeah, we'll see when that thing launches if in it's, it's final not a form. disaster. <laughs> um, so, you know, we'll have to see. And I don't think that all games and all developers want crossplay or need crossplay. Sure. I think obviously it makes sense for certain games, but, you know, like I... I didn't, it's hard enough for me to get a group of friends together on one platform. <laughs> Let alone jumping through all these hoops to make it happen somewhere else. Hugh Simmons or Simon D Sim Simons writes in to kind of funny.com slash KFGD and says after yesterday's news about Amy Hennig leaving EA. Well, that was, he just put a period there. Has her <laughs> last few projects being canceled or being scrapped in the case of Uncharted 4 damaged her reputation? So basically, the ending of the Star Wars game and the way it ended with the closure of Visceral and then the her leaving Naughty Dog after Uncharted 4 problems. D- do you think this has hurt Amy's career reputation? No. Me neither. I don't think so. I mean, then again, I'm not privy to a lot of those conversations, 100%. right? Like I wouldn't be invited to a meeting where someone's discussing working with her. Sure. Um, I think from the outside, no, I haven't heard any chatter that suggests that people are concerned about her being on projects. I think her reputation is still very, very good. I think a great example, a great analog to this in, in grant that I think that may, that there's more of a lineage and history behind his reputation, but Kojima, right? In the mm-hmm. way that like, 
Kojima and Konami clash, and we assume it was from the rumor and scuttlebutt is that... That was super public, though. I know, but I'm saying, like, the game... But, but Konami's... Even though Konami totally handled the situation poorly from an optics level, right? It was mm-hmm. that, well, his game's taking too long, or he's missing deadlines, or what it's... Well, he's still Kojima, right? And whoever... And it ended up being PlayStation. Whoever would pick him up, you knew would get like a huge boon out of that. Right. Somebody working with Amy, especially if she wants to do this smaller studio and do all these little projects like she was talking about, the person who can get her on stage at next E3 to talk, or two E3s from now to talk about her thing and what it is, people are going to be super stoked and excited to hear what she's been working on. I, I think so. I think the Kojima comparison is a little apples to oranges okay. because he had shipped a game sure. and it came out and was very well received and then was kind of like in this limbo zone with, with his, yeah. his relationship with the publisher. Whereas Amy hasn't shipped a game in a long time. This is Uncharted 3, yeah. So I think her situation is a point. little bit different. So the optics obviously aren't in her favor the way they were in Kojima's. Yeah. Um, and Jeff Keighley isn't standing on the stage at the Game Awards being like, let's bring Amy Let My up. best friend, Amy um, But... I'm still excited and I think a lot of her fans are still excited to see where she's going to land and what she's going to do. I thought it was interesting hearing she's starting her own studio and you know, is going to be doing some consulting and VR seems to be on her mind. I, That's I'm interesting. like, please yeah. don't go that way, Amy. Don't, don't stop, go to don't VR. Don't stop the VR train, Andrea. <laughs> Let somebody push the medium forward. I mean, but she's, I'll tell you how good it is. You I can just believe me. I want a big, me. meaty, long narrative experience and I just can't wear the headset well, for that long, Well, that's Greg. the interesting thing too about what she'll do next is I think this is what she needs right now, right? You kind of saw Ken, Ken Levine talk about this a bit, right? Of just like, She's uh, in, for her in particular, right? Of she was working on two big meaty AAA games, mm-hmm. Uncharted Four, and then the Star Wars thing, and to see neither of them come to fruition. I've got to imagine it's she wants to get a game out, she wants right? To win. Let's just yeah, let's just yeah. sit there and let's make a small VR title that's a couple hours that is super narrative that pushes VR in a way that people aren't using it, and that'd be cool. And then she'll get back to you know making a bigger game, a longer game, having to worry about stuff. Okay, you allow that? Of course. All right, that's Andrea approved. Everybody, get Amy <laughs> on the phone and let her know. It's okay. Marty McGriddle writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey, just a friendly, friendly reminder about Kebab's Lego podcast studio idea. The idea has about 400 supporters, but needs 1,000. Just a friendly reminder, because I know we can hit these numbers. P.S. I am not Kebab's in disguise, and shout out to fellow community member Piro. Thanks. No, you make a good point, Marty. Of course, if you remember, Kebab's did the, the, the kind of funny studios, submitted it to Lego Ideas. Uh, they said, no, this is too on brand. There they, are 396 supporters as of today. He generalized it down to be the podcast studio, so very much our podcast studio. We still want to support it, but of course, E3 happened. Now, prom's happening. There's always a million things. I think we have a year to get it to 1,000 f- supporters. Correct. So if you want to find it, you all you t- do is type into Google Lego podcast set. Now, here's the thing. And when you go it's there, the fir- it's the first thing you need to support it and say you want it. The problem, of course, that you have to make a Lego account. You do. I've already had a Lego account for years, of course. And when they started doing all these uh, DC figures, I had to get on there. I need you to do it. Just do it. It's easy. They don't harass you. Unsubscribe from the newsletter. You're fine. Cool, Greg. Is it hard? Oh, man, it's too easy. Thank you, man. That's what I'm talking about. Just get in there. Help out kebabs. Let's make this thing a reality. Right, Kev? Yeah. JBR writes in and says, Hey, Greg and Andrea, was there any love or spotlight for Detroit Become Human? It came out a month ago, and I haven't really heard much talk about it, unlike the way that God of War was loved and praised. It's currently my game of the year. This game is special. It should have gotten more love. Would love to hear your thoughts. Greetings from Florida, JBR. Funny that you mentioned that. Because we talked about it for, I believe, 45 minutes on the What's Good Games podcast, which is available right now. Uh, Yeah, I would not recommend going to listen until you've finished the game. Or unless you don't care about us spoiling major plot points for you. But um, I agree that it kind of like flew under the radar. And I think that a lot of that had to do with its release date coming just a week and a half, two weeks before E3. Mm. It just got swallowed in all of those pre-E3 announcements. Teaser trailers dropping, people announcing new AAA games. It just that wave of marketing just deafened any kind of I feel like tail it, they could have had. I feel like it had its moment. I just feel for someone like yourself, JBR, who says it's your game of the year, not a lot of people agreed with that. So it hasn't been championed like God of War, which is my current game of the year was. I like Detroit. We talked about Detroit. We had a great discussion, Andy and myself on the games cast when we reviewed it. But it was like that thing of, oh, man, should we do a spoiler cast? I guess so. But it's what you're talking about. Well, I'm like, I'm out next week for this, that, and the other. This, And it just never happened until mm-hmm. we went and did it for what's good. So I feel like that's the real reason is like it, it came and it had a moment with the people it connected with. But it didn't resonate with everyone on the level it resonated with you. So it hasn't gone that way. Your opinion's bad, JBR. 
<laughs> Ray Briggs. I'm kidding, JBR. I love you. Ray Briggs the second writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hey, Greg and illustrious co-host Andrea. I have some inside baseball questions for Kind of Funny Games Daily. How many questions do you guys generally get per episode? I would say, Ray, 40, 45. Sounds about right. Uh, when do you clear the queue of old questions? Never. Usually the more. <laughs> no, I'm getting better about it. I'm getting better about it. I try to do it daily now of going through up until the whatever noon time of. OK, the so day that before. means I can clear the old your wrongs. Yes, your wrongs. I'm real bad at it because I never look at it till we're live. That's the one I, I fuck up all the time. Uh, if I send a question Saturday, do you see it Monday morning? Generally, yeah, but I'm more inclined there to, to peter off going backwards because, of course, it's usually about the news of the day is what I want the questions about. So you're in there. If I send it on Thursday at midnight, do you see it Friday? I do. Just curious about the process. Now, you know, have a great time at prom. Wish I could join you. Ray Briggs the second. Thank you, Ray. We'll see you. Somewhere else, I guess. Wherever the fuck you live. I don't know. I'll come to your house one day. Cool, Greg, and I'll bust through the wall. Final question of the week goes to Stephen Oslin, who writes in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Hi, Greg and Andrea. Luminous was the first game I played on my Vita, thanks to Beyond, for both. Oh, the Vita and Luminous. No problem. And I fell in love. I'm looking to grab Luminous Remastered, but I'm struggling to decide between getting it on Switch or PlayStation 4. What platform are you playing it on? I love trophies, but I don't know if the Platinum is actually attainable. Should I sacrifice the portability of Switch for trophies or perhaps a smoother experience? Curious to hear your thoughts. P.S. Have a great prom weekend, everybody. Sadly missing it, but hoping to see a bunch of best friends at Comic-Con soon. Steven Oslin. Uh, I can't answer this question, Steven. I have it on both platforms. I need it on the go. I need it for the platinum. I need to be there. You can ask, is the platinum attainable? It's attainable if you're good at Luminous. And I don't mean that in like a, a Greg Miller brushing his shoulder off dick way. I mean like, got I got him good. T- I got him, Kev. But like you got to play Endless Mode, and I think twice in a one thing where you go through the entire cycle. So 200 stages of Luminous with that. Yikes. Yeah, so it's tough and it's going to be tough for me even. I just need to get back in shape right now. Right, like, right, right now I'm like Rocky in any of the Rockies I have. I've never seen a full Rocky. Yeah, the start. But like, start. you know what I mean? I'm at the star Rocky. Yeah. Um, I'm, in, I'm in commercials. I'm in commercials. I'm overweight. Everybody remembers me being good. I sit down to play and I lose and I go, oh, fuck, I got to train with a log. Rocky right That's Rocky yeah. five. All right, cool. I, I'm like Rocky five right now where I need to train a bit. Get, get my get my hands back up, you know, and get back out there. I know that feeling. That's how gonna, I felt when Amplitude came out. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hard platinum. I'll tell you that. It's, you're gonna have to, you're, it'll push you in your luminous skills. But I believe in you, Stephen Oslin. But if you don't want to sit there and torture yourself, I also understand just playing it on Switch and not caring and having a good time. Play it wherever you want to. Andrew? Yes. This is where we ask people to squad up. Kids write in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Give me their name, username, platform of choice, and why they need help in video games. I read it here. The best friends come and find you. You all play games together and have a good old time. Today, Diego A. Castro needs help on the PlayStation 4. His PSN name is Seal Recon underscore 21. I tried doing it on my own and was bitch slapped into realizing that I need help. I've come crawling and begging for help on Destiny 2 Nightfall Strikes. Oh, Stay come beautiful. On, Nightfall's not and that love hard. The show. It's 270. They haven't. Um. And he has great too. Woo! Diego needs help. Diego needs help. You know, how about you answer his call then, huh? Okay. Answer the flare from Seal Recon underscore 21. Get out there and help him. Andrea, yes. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games to keep us honest by going to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong we and do. telling us what we screw up as we screw it up so we set the record straight for YouTube, podcasts, and wherever this gets beamed. What did we get wrong today? Kebab says Greg was correct. He was thinking of on live. It was shut down at the end of April 2015 after SCE bought it earlier that month. It launched in June 2010 with a $15 subscription fee, then went free four months later. Mm-hmm. Lord Pone says Google Fiber currently has upcoming cities, but they do have a currently has maybe they do not have upcoming cities but they do have a few potential cities listed on their site so google fiber is still a thing but plans to appear but plans appear to be on hold reading is hard (laughs) capitalist pig says read that old phone name pacific bell telephone company aka pac bell as in pac bell park that's something i'm just thinking of southern bells and southern dandies i guess um, Spasmgasm says, Q science with Kev theme. Science, science, science with Kev. 
<laughs> Greg, the radio waves and microwaves associated with Wi-Fi routers and cell phones, etc., aren't high enough energy to ionize human DNA, as opposed to, say, gamma rays, and therefore do not cause cancer. Bring on the Wi-Fi Zeppelins. Yeah, keep believing whatever the fucking man tells you, right, you know, Kev? That's the trying to trick you, dude. <laughs> yeah, We're no, yeah, way, way to fall for it. And next you're going to tell me the fluoride in your water isn't controlling your brain? Get out of here. You're not a chemtrails guy, are no, you? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> what what are what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, what are the chemtrails? Aren't I mean, they just water vapor? <laughs> that's what they want you to think, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh, we're not doing this. <laughs> Capitalist Pig says re mobile gaming versus PC gaming. A new report from industry analyst DFC Intelligence found that mobile games revenue exceeded PC and console revenue for the first time ever dun, in twenty sixteen. So it was two years earlier than I thought. Wow. Look at that. Go mobile games. Go mobile games. Do your thing. Be Hashtag mobile. Andrew was right. Uh, cool, Greg. <laughs> cool, Greg. Have you gotten back on the There's train that is uh, Goosebumps? I have not, but I'm, I'm going to be back. Go You're going to get back in Goosebumps? It. Okay. Okay. Um, Lucar Wolf says, Greg, you failed to mention that Crash Bandicoot is also on PC now to help alleviate our boredom from endless hours of PowerPoint and TurboTax. Uh, I, I thought you were still in your Minesweeper eSport Championship, so I didn't realize you'd care so much. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin just taking apart everything while we do the show and just dropping things all over that place. So Dennis brings up a, a good point here, but we, I, we kind of talked about it. it was about Google services and how I would like something that kind of connects it all. Um, I'm aware that there are TVs that have apps and that there are other types of streaming boxes, but I was saying if Google like combines all of these things into one super box so I don't super have to box. have my Google apps on all my various devices. The Goog box. Googs. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, Charles J says, on the topic of Sony charging more for crossplay, Xbox is charging for the ability to play free-to-play games such as Fortnite online. So wouldn't it be more likely Sony would do the same to get some extra subscriptions? Yeah, but I mean... You're talking about how that you have to have Xbox Live for Fortnite. You don't need to have PSN or PlayStation Plus for Fortnite. But I believe, Go and ahead. I would need someone from PlayStation to confirm this. Get you hand on the phone. I thought that that was a deal they did with Epic. I don't think that that is like a a company wide policy because I know like specifically the deal they did with Activision for Destiny is a little bit different as well because you only need PlayStation Plus for certain things. Yeah, yeah, if you true, play Destiny true, 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 true. on. Correct. Uh, there's probably something happening in the background on that one. Right. I think your messaging is going to be super sticky to get out and say that and right. express that and not have it blow up in your face and have fan reaction be like, I can't believe you want ten more dollars yeah. out of me, because it's the same thing of like even with what's happened, you know, with the uh, cross progression and cross play, right? Like so many people have been have written in or talked to me somewhere about like, well, keep in mind that I think, I think they talked about Fortnite, but they might've been talking about Rocket League at launch. They didn't allow that like on Xbox, like Xbox had to come to their senses or like decide to do this. Like mm -hmm. everybody's forgetting that in this argument because of where we're at right now, forgetting the history. It was on the other platform. They always forget Greg. You know what I mean? Never forget. That's what I would say. Jesus Christ. That was a loud one, Kev. You know what I mean? <laughs> Kebab says you can also use kindoffunny.com slash Lego to go to the wow. Lego podcast page. That's Lego Ideas also recently revamped their site, so it should be easier to make a new account and show your support. Are we going to push that eventually? We have a year, and it's just like right now in the middle of E3 and prom, and it's not the best time to be pushing it. You know yeah. what I mean? Again, kindoffunny.com slash Lego. Kindoffunny.com slash Lego. Um, Please don't crash our site right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Parker Petrov says it was alluded that Google had more money than current console companies during discussion on possible Google streaming box. Google has a market valuation of $739 billion, while Microsoft is valued at $753 billion, making it the third most valuable company in the world. Only Amazon and Apple are worth more than Microsoft. Google does have immensely more money than Sony and Nintendo, who has a market value of $65 billion, and Nintendo is at $39 billion. I think we often forget just how big Microsoft is. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's big. Seven hundred and fifty three billion. That literally just happened like a week and a half. Kevin Sandler. But don't they, haven't they been going back and forth like Alphabet and Amazon yeah. and Microsoft have all been kind of like trading places? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. I thought Alphabet was on top. That's Google's parent company. Yeah, okay. I think so. Huh. I could be wrong. No, you you're probably right. It's just fascinating to me. But also, when you're talking about 739 billion versus 753 billion, what are we really talking about here? You know, 
Splitting hairs. Oh my gosh. It's more money than I can even imagine what to do with. Okay. Lord of Pwn says there's a few academic papers out there about Luminous if you're looking to get better at the game. That's interesting. Wait, what? There's academic papers about oh, how to get better at Luminous? He said he saw a link on Reset Era. Please, yes, please tweet these. Uh, please tweet these at me. Also, Capitalist Pig says uh, read the Luminous challenge mode. There are 100 levels, not 200, like Greg said. And as I said, motherfucker, as I now correct you with your wrong, you have to play endless mode twice for one of those trophies. Hence the fact that you would need to go through 200 stages. Break your dick off right now oh and never try to correct me about trophies and Luminous again. You can do it. <laughs> Kevin, you're the best. Uh, Ignacio Rojas says Amy Hennig's last shipped game was Battlefield Hardline. She worked as, quote, additional direction. So while that technically is true, we're, I think Greg and I are, are like the referring game to a game that she was the head of. Right? Her that she game. Was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that was uh, May or March of 2015, I believe. Um, <laughs> Kebabs, I know Greg was joking, but there are, in fact, competitive Minesweeper championships. You fucking dorks. <laughs> Fucking PC dorks. That's the last one. Jeez, that was a long one. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I was a fun one. All it right. was uh, seven minutes of you're wrong. Jesus. Some of it was just adding information that we weren't that wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, good. But we asked them to write in. Remember? We did. We did. Yeah. We did. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Remember, each and every week down a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. Kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. Then watch it live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. Watch it later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Or listen to it on podcast services around the globe. Uh, tomorrow's host is, is next week. Because it's prom tomorrow, everybody. Whoop, whoop. Kind of funny prom. You still have time. Cool Greg has uh, verified planes are in the air. You can get to San Francisco. Uh, remember, I'm not here at all next week. Uh, I'm in Montreal. So come to my meet and greet. I'm also not here at all July next week. 5th in Montreal. Where are you going? Where's your meet and greet? Um, you know, we could maybe do one. I'll be in Chicago. Uh, all right. Find a Portillo's to meet up at? Go to my mom's Portillo's. Oh, yeah? Which one do you work at? Bloomingdale. Bloomingdale. Okay, that's not too yeah. far. We're going to be in Lake Forest. She's on Lake Street in, Bloom in Bloomingdale, yeah. So go nice. go find my mom. Uh, Tim will be hosting all week, and he's put, we're doing a show every day, even 4th of July. So let's see who we get on these things. <laughs> You're doing a doing. show on the 4th of July? You know what? We're crazy, and we love America so much, we want to celebrate video games on America's birthday. Do you think you could have sparklers in here? No, I do not think. I think Nick would blow a gasket and a half if you brought a sparkler Probably. in here. Probably. That would be a horrible What idea. about those snap things you throw on the ground? Yeah, sure. Kevin have to clean it up, but no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.